the word thesis as if we know what it means, right? But I thought, well, maybe we should really just back up. What is it? So this is from dictionary.com. The first two definitions are common uses of the word. It can mean a proposition. Um, it can mean an essay. But the one we're really focused on is this. A dissertation, and by the way, a dissertation is a written essay, treatise, or thesis. Isn't it unfair how dictionaries can just like use this circular logic none of the rest of us are allowed to do? Um, so a thesis is a thesis <laughs> on a particular subject in which one has done original research as one presented by a candidate for a diploma or degree. So here's the deal. It's a piece of writing in which you describe research that you did. So this means it is different from a report on other people's research, although it includes what other people have said about your topic. But one of the first things I want you to understand is that this is an opportunity and a requirement for you to craft a question and investigate it yourself. Wikipedia says a thesis is a document submitted in support with for a degree. This all makes sense, right? You're on the right path. You're in the right place. Presenting the author's research and finding. And the required complexity uh, and quality of the research um, can vary by country, university, or program. The document reports on a research project or study or an extended analysis of a topic. The document you produce has to be very clear about what the document's about, what other people have said about it, the methods that you use to do your investigation, what you learned from it, research findings. That's what you learned from your own investigation. We'll talk some more about what is in each of these sections so that you have more than just a noun for a chapter title. But just to review them briefly, the introduction, and this is all a quotation from Wikipedia, provides a brief orientation to the topic, how you investigated it, and what you looked for and what you didn't, and, and it hints at why it's important to, to investigate this. The second chapter is a literature review. This is a chapter that summarizes what other people have said about different elements of your research question. So if you have a research question on the possibilities of integrating indigenous knowledge systems into localized efforts to reduce vulnerability for climate change in Zimbabwe, that's a very nice specific target it's targeted regionally. It's targeted topically, right? So the region is Zimbabwe. The topic is indigenous knowledge system with disaster risk reduction. Each of those has words written about it in the research literature and in the practitioner literature and in the reports of other organizations. And so the literature review for this thesis is going to provide evidence that the author is not just making stuff up and he's not working in a vacuum. He's trying to be aware of what other people say about these things. So there will be a section in the literature review that talks about climate change for this country and its vulnerability generally. There's going to be a section in the literature review that talks about what indigenous knowledge systems are. There's going to be a section that talks about disaster risk reduction in, in general in, in developing countries. And the end of this chapter review will say, here's why all these things are important to draw together for this. And this specifically are the questions that need to be investigated. Right? So can you get a, begin to get a feel for this? 
you have a research question, the literature review talks about what's written about different aspects of that question. Because you're probably asking a question that maybe not many people have asked in exactly the way you're asking it. That's why what is needed is your investigation to provide what you learn about the question the way you are posing it. Okay. The third section is your methodology or your methods section. This describes the procedures for how you go about investigating your research question. And it also provides information on why these procedures are relevant for this question. So if you're going to do um, a supply chain optimization for a particular uh, organization for non-food items in a particular country, then you need to have as chapter saying why you chose the methods that you do. If you're doing an optimization, you probably want to talk about how optimization has been used to solve other supply chain problems. Right? Outside Zimbabwe, outside your organization, outside, outside humanitarian logistics. It's a valid way of going about. And then you need to talk about how you adapted that method for your particular use, how you conceptualized the optimization problem. If, there is, if you need to get real data to calibrate your model, you're going to explain how you got this data, how you had access to it, how clean that data is. You don't have to collect it all yourself. But you do need to explain that what you, how you went about investigating this is a reasonable approach. You need to provide enough information that any reasonable person who is moderately informed about the issue would say, well, that's not bad. I think I might have done the same thing. Okay, That's what your methods section is. In your findings chapter, it's just the facts. You explain what you found. You don't provide a lot of interpretation. You don't, uh, you don't relate it to everything in the big world. You don't provide recommendations right away. You stick very close to the narrow limitations of what you did. If you asked eight questions of 45 people, then your findings chapter reports what, what you, you create ways to summarize what these 45 people had to say about each question. You don't provide information about other things they said that weren't these questions. You don't provide information about, yeah, but this guy was kind of a jerk, so I don't know if I'd interpret his stuff, right? <laughs> so you just present what you found as closely to what you described in the methods as possible. Now the next chapter is the really interesting part because this is where you are writing about what you learned in the way that drove you to investigate this question in the first place. So this is the real meat of it. This, it may not be the longest chapter, but this is probably the chapter that gives you the most energy by the time you're there. And finally, penultimately, not quite finally, you have a conclusion. And that's where you go back to the questions posed in the introduction. You said this is what was set out as the objectives. And you tie what you learned from it directly to what you said in chapter one. You have to have a section of references. This is your bibliography. This is where you give full information so on every source that you referred to in the thesis so that anybody who reads it could go find the same things that you read and, and assess if you did a good job of interpreting it. Or maybe they want to learn more about that aspect of your thesis for their own research. So the big picture is the thesis is a finite thing does not need to be the project that blots out the sun. Okay? So it has seven sections plus an abstract. Pragmatically, 
You're aiming to package these seven sections in abstract in a document that is between 50 and 75 pages or so. And that's space and a half for double spaced in a reasonable font type. You're not going to use 80 point font. <laughs> and you're not going to use nine point font either. All right? So I want you to understand that it's finite. It's doable. There is a point at which you can be done. <laughs>